But first, to the cruel decision of the Dan Andrews government to stop IVF treatment for thousands of vulnerable women desperate to have children. Remember two weeks to flatten the curve? Well, that's turned into two years of illogical, ineffective restrictions that cause considerable harm and little good. The latest cruel restriction imposed by the Victorian government is one that makes little sense and leaves thousands of women undergoing IVF treatment utterly devastated. Let's put, be clear, this decision could deprive some women of the chance to become mothers. Time is of the essence for those undertaking fertility treatment and a three-month pause could be the difference between success and failure. It is so unspeakably cruel and unnecessary. We've got one in eight Australian women who are experiencing infertility and they deserve better than to have their dreams of motherhood dashed by an inept government that continues to mismanage the state's COVID response. A petition calling for Premier Dan Andrews to reinstate fertility and IVF treatments already has thousands of signatures. Just listen to Melanie here, who pleads with the Victorian government to reconsider their decision. I can't even fathom how you came to the decision that you did. And I thought maybe it's because you've never actually met someone who's going through IVF. So... My name is Melanie and I'm currently going through IVF process and I really just wanted to let you know that this is something that not I elected to do and not one other person who is going through IVF or who has been through IVF or who's just about to start IVF has elected to do. This is something we are doing as our only opportunity to have a child. We have tried everything else. Trust me, we have tried everything else. This is something that is a necessity and you are taking it away from us. Some of us may only have one or two more opportunities to have children and by opportunities, I mean months. Melanie is right, IVF is not a choice and politicians should not be allowed to deprive women of the opportunity to become mothers. The consequences of this policy could have lifelong implications for women undergoing fertility treatment. What I really, really want you to do is just to sit down in your house and for one moment erase every single trace of your children. Mentally erase all traces of your children. Every photograph on the wall, every photo in a photo album, all the food in the fridge that they love, all the food in the cupboard that they love, all their clothes everywhere, all the laughter, all the banter, all the joy, all the conversation. Go to their room, have a look around and then empty it. Mentally empty that room. Delete any trace of children in your house. It is awful. It is awful and it's odd. It's so weird. It doesn't make sense. But it is exactly what you are asking us to do. It is exactly what you're forcing us to do. It doesn't make any sense at all. It takes enormous courage to speak so openly about something that is so intensely personal. What Melanie express is expressing there is felt by thousands of other women who are impacted by this decision. IVF patient Laura Mundy has also publicly pleaded with the Andrews government to reconsider the blanket ban on treatment. She read, she said, every month is absolutely vital for myself and tens of thousands of other women in Victoria that are absolutely devastated by what's happening at the moment. Angela Sobrano also spoke out, calling the decision one guided by ignorance and not understanding exactly what people with IVF go through. I'll be speaking to a leading IVF specialist about the full ramifications of this policy and whether cancelling IVF treatments will actually relieve any pressure on the hospital system. We wouldn't be in this strife if Dan Andrews had delivered on his promise of 4,000 new ICU beds. 
equipment and staff. A promise he made in April 2020. A promise he now pretends was never made. Remember this? I think April last year that former Minister Makarkos announced 4,000 extra beds would be coming online. Do you know how many have been delivered since then? No, no, no hang on a minute. She never... No, hang on. That's, that is not what she announced. We currently have about 450, about 500 intensive care beds in Victoria and now uh, we're going to fund another 4,000 intensive care beds, taking us to a total of 4,500. The notion that we're going to have 4,000 beds down at, you know, a warehouse somewhere, turn the exhibition buildings into an ICU unit and then have a nurse at the foot of each of those beds practising hospital corners, like, no, that's not how it works. I don't rule out uh, Melbourne Convention Centre. I don't rule out the uh, exhibition buildings, whatever it might be, a really big space. The man really does have a unique relationship with the truth. His own office released a statement on April 1, 2020, confirming that Victoria's ICU capacity would be increased by 4,000 beds in response to the COVID crisis. The statement read, and I quote it directly here, Victoria's health system will receive a massive 1.3 billion injection to quickly, quickly establish an extra 4,000 ICU beds as we respond to the coronavirus pandemic and protect Victorian lives. Premier Daniel Andrews and Health Minister uh, Jenny McCarkos announced the boost, which will secure the ICU equipment, staff and space we need to meet the expected surge in caseload at the peak of the pandemic. At present, Victoria's public and private health services have approximately 450 fully equipped and staffed ICU beds, but we know that won't be nearly enough if the spread of the coronavirus continues. But the beds never came. And today, the Victorian government issued a statewide code brown as the hospital system struggles to cope. Where are the ICU beds, Dan? Dan Andrews has been running this state since 2014, and he was the health minister in the Brum Brumby government. He is responsible if Victoria's health system isn't fit for purpose.